This year it's been so difficult for us. Normally we have two, sometimes three uh, corn. This year we have here about uh, half, about 40,000 plants of corn per hectare. It's too low. Overall, about 80% of the world's agriculture is rain-fed, and a lot of that's happening in developing countries. In some of those countries, they have a very well-defined rainy season. If that rainy season doesn't come, that's devastating. They might have to sell off their livestock. People are going hungry. We have to think about how do people make decisions? How do people understand uncertainty? The IRI works with kind of every level of that, producing useful information and then working with decision makers in order to figure out how that might result in better outcomes. There are a number of things that distinguish the IRI from other climate institutes. I think just our name, as it connotes the International Research Institute for Climate and Society, having climate and society together in one institution is, is fairly unique. About half of our scientists are climate scientists, but the other half work in disciplines that are impacted by climate. So that could be agriculture or financial instruments, ecosystems, disasters, water, health. Under the same roof, you have these amazing discussions. How this excellent information that is being generated in the climate science can really improve the lives of real people. It's also great to be a part of the Earth Institute because there are really a lot of world-class climate scientists that we can engage. So in Uruguay, the Ministry of Agriculture decided that they wanted a way to make better decisions about agricultural production, about their own policies, about how to respond to emergencies, and that they, they needed that to be informed by climate. What we did was to establish an information system that would help decision-making in the private sector for the farming community, but also help the ministry to elaborate public policy. It's called the National Agriculture Information System. And it merges vast quantities of data in different tools. The farmer can visualize how their yield would be different from different scenarios. They can select soil type, what kind of crop they plant, some irrigation and fertilizer, and based on those different options, they can quickly get grabs, which shows expected yield distribution or expected economic margin distribution. Now we have the numbers. It used to be qualitative, now it's quantitative. The work we had done in Uruguay was sort of a proof of concept of the type of approach we take to bringing climate information into decisions, in that case, in agriculture. And certainly the World Bank who funded it, they were very happy. Uruguay is very happy, it's impacted policy. How do you translate climate information of the past, of the present, or of the future into agricultural terms, or into risks of malaria infections, or into risk of forest fires in the Amazon? We work at those intersections, but we're also very open and recognize the critical importance of partnerships. It's taken 20 years to build the approach to where it is now to be able to do what we did in Uruguay. And we really have now the partners around the world that allow us to go in and work very effectively with a number of countries. I think one thing we've learned is that great climate science in a bubble doesn't lead to the societal outcomes that some of us may be looking for. Yeah, you can spend your whole life producing scientific information that is great, publishing these wonderful papers in very prestigious journals, but it's also amazingly exciting when you see that work being applied, that work really affecting the way that a country functions. Being at Columbia University is, is very valuable for the IRI. If we really want to tackle challenges like food insecurity or poverty, 
those problems require an interdisciplinary approach. We are not the policy experts, we're not lawyers, we're not in the business. By being able to reach across to SEPA, to the law school, to the business school, and bring in that expertise, I think we can offer a lot to the developing world to help them solve their problems. We're looking to take the science and the knowledge that's been created at Columbia and apply that to really important world challenges.